What's up YouTube, Cody Bidlow with SprintingWorkouts.com. Today we're going to be talking about how you can use force velocity profiling to figure out what it is that you need to work on in your sprint training program. I think one of the most challenging things about training is knowing what it is you need to do. You know, you could train for strength, you could train for power, endurance, mobility, speed, acceleration. There's really an unlimited number of directions that you could go with your training. And so if you don't have any idea of what it is that you need to do, you're going to be completely lost. And I know I've been in that position before to where I'm like, man, what should I do? I, I know I could do all of these different things, but which of those things is going to lead to the most improvement in sprinting, which is ultimately what we want. There's countless ways that you could assess yourself as an athlete. And I think that force velocity profiling is one that is backed by research that is very specifically useful for sprinters and is something that you could do with virtually no equipment other than your smartphone, a tripod, an app, and some cones. You could do force velocity profiling with jumping exercises like a, a counter movement jump or a vertical jump, and you could do it with sprinting. I would suggest that you do both so you have an understanding of you know, your vertical force velocity profile, which you'll test via jumping, but most important obviously to sprinting would be a force velocity profile that you achieve or that you are able to you know register while sprinting because when it comes to sprinting how far and how fast you're projecting yourself horizontally is going to determine how fast you run and if the only force velocity profile that you have on yourself is in a vertical plane of movement where you have zero horizontal displacement then i don't think that you're going to get the whole picture it's quite useful to have a, a jump based force velocity profile, but you really will benefit most if you do force velocity profiling out on the track when you sprint. The most simple way to do this is to get the My Sprint app. It's on the App Store. I get nothing for it. I'm in no way affiliated with them. Other than that, I use the app. I bought it, I use it, and that's what I use to get my own force velocity profile. It's very simple to use. You set up at least six cones. Um, approximately every five meters. You want to set the camera 30 meters away from the 15 meter mark, looking at you from the side while you're sprinting. There's a bunch of different measurements that it's going to give you within the app when you're looking at your force velocity profile. Um, and to understand some of these, you need to understand what ratio of force means. So your ratio of force, put most simply, is your horizontal force production into the ground divided by your total force production. So say you're able to produce, you know, a thousand newtons of force, but only 10% of that is going horizontally and maybe 50% of that is going into the ground vertically and 40% is breaking forces that are directed in front of you, which are slowing you down. Well, your ratio of force is going to be 10%. Whereas if you're able to apply, say, 60% of that force production horizontally, then you're going to have a much higher ratio of force. And... Most, most importantly, you're going to run faster. The fastest sprinters have a very high ratio of force. Of all the force they're producing, they're able to apply it horizontally. That's why you might see some twig looking guy who's super skinny who's able to run way faster than you. He may not be producing any more force than you, but they're producing that force and orienting it much more effectively horizontally into the ground to send them in the right direction. So this ratio of force is something that you really need to understand. It's a fundamental underlying performance quality for sprinting. Your ratio of force, which once again, horizontal force divided by total force, this is essentially, uh, you know, the thing that's going to separate you from other sprinters is how quality is your ground force application, and the ratio of force tells you that. Now, once you're in the app and you've you've you know gone through and registered your times and everything it's going to give you all these different measurements like maximal velocity theoretical maximal velocity maximal force production power production um, but the things that i think are most important to pay attention to are maximal velocity reached during the sprint which is going to be v max uh, let's see there's power max uh, or rather maximal power relative to body weight that's going to say p max w slash kg that's power max in watts per kilogram so that's showing you how much horizontal power production you're putting out um, relative to your body weight and this is something you can measure over time to see whether you gain or lose weight say you get stronger but you gain some weight well you can look at your force velocity profile and see did my power my maximal power relative to body weight improve or not 
because that's going to be really important. Just because your power goes up doesn't mean you're going to run any faster. If your power goes up relative to body weight, then you probably will go run faster, you know? And, and in this app, it's going to show you maximal power in a horizontal direction, which is most important here, because we run in a horizontal direction. If all we wanted to do was produce power in general, then you could test it with a vertical jump. But why don't vertical jump tests transfer to sprinting performance in a one-to-one -one ratio? It's because a vertical jump is vertical force, and sprinting requires horizontal force and vertical force. So by using the My Sprint app, you can look at these things and see, over time, am I improving or not at these these you know qualities of of movement that underlie sprinting performance in a really fundamental way. Another really important one that's going to be in there is DRF. This is decrease in the ratio of force. So remember, ratio of force, horizontal force divided by total force. As you accelerate, every step that you accelerate, you will have a decrease in how much of the force you're producing is being oriented horizontally. And the fastest sprinters produce more horizontal force later in the sprint than slower sprinters. So if you want to run fast, you need to be able to produce horizontal force both during the start and as you've accelerated. And by seeing what your DRF is, you can see how much does your horizontal force production go down, how much does it decrease, hence decrease in the ratio of force, DRF, how much does it go down as you accelerate? So you can know, okay, um, in January my DRF was, I don't know, negative 0 0.07. But maybe after a month or two of training based on your force velocity profile, now your DRF is negative 0.05. Well, you've improved your ability to produce horizontal force later in the sprint. So you say you do parachute sprints and you want to see, does that help your DRF? Well, you could measure that over time. And that's just one of the things that this app shows. Another important thing, which is kind of the whole point of this, um, it'll show you your force velocity imbalance. So if you, sh if you register an FV number below 100, that means you have a force deficit and you need to, w you need to do things that will work on producing horizontal force at lower velocities. Numbers above 100 mean that you have a velocity deficit, meaning that that's what you need to work on is producing velocity. A number around 100, give or take, means you have a balanced force velocity profile and can probably continue to train uh, with a relatively balanced program. RF at 10 meters is another thing this app will show, so that's your ratio of force at 10 meters. You may have a great ratio of force coming out of the blocks, but by 10 meters it's gone way down. So this RF 10 meters is a good measurement of not only how good are you at starting, but how good are you at being able to take that good start and continue through 10 meters and continue to accelerate the rest of the way. In general, if we can measure an upward trend of maximal power relative to body weight, that P max W over KG, as well as ratio of force at 10 meters, your peak ratio of force, and your uh, maximal velocity, which are all measured by the app, if we can see an upward trend in all those numbers, athletes should be improving their sprint times. Additionally, we want to see DRF go down. Remember, that's decrease in the ratio of force. We want less of a decrease in the ratio of force. So we can track DRF over time and make sure that that's going down. So if we see maximal power, ratio of force, and maximal velocity going up, and then we see decrease in the ratio of force going down, can almost guarantee that you're gonna run faster because these are fundamental underlying mechanical properties that are going to dictate how fast you run and how well you can accelerate. Once you see the numbers that you've registered on your force velocity profile, you can go about setting up your training in a way that is tailored to wherever your deficits are. So if your deficit is force like me, then you need to think, okay, what kind of strength do I need to develop? Where are my weaknesses with strength and power? And how can I implement that into my program in a way that is not going to, you know, just kill me and make me slow, like doing heavy squats every single day, but do strength training that is going to be relevant to sprinting and that I can see having some transfer to my sprinting after I've done enough of it. Um, so that's where things like, you know, step ups are going to be a good thing to do some squat jumps at medium to heavier loads. Back squats and box squats are not a bad idea to include. You could do really heavy sled pulls. So like the other day when I went out to the gym for the first time in a while, I threw 400 pounds on the sled, went for 10 steps, turn around 10 more steps, something like that. Um, you don't have to be you know, hitting 99% max effort 
absolute strength lifts to get stronger for your sprinting, but you do need to be doing things that are relatively slow, relatively heavy, and that are challenging you to produce force. I would say it's good to mix up and have a little bit of bilateral work like the squat jumps or back squats and box squats, as well as some unilateral or split leg work like a step up, reverse lunge, split squat, the sled pulls, those are all gonna be great to include in your training if you have a force deficit. The other things that I would look at when you have a force deficit are training the hamstrings. Single leg back extensions are probably my favorite exercise for hamstrings. You could do um, a two up, one down leg curl. You could do regular leg curls. You could do Nordic curls. You could do RDLs. It's up to you what you choose, but you do wanna have some exercises in there that are going to be working on hamstring strength at long lengths, um, maybe some eccentric components there. You could do some isometric training in there as well. A good holistic strength program is going to help you, and I hope you understand that that's kind of the point here. You don't have to go and do a pure powerlifting workout, but at the same time, you do want to be doing things that are challenging you for force outputs in unilateral, bilateral, split leg, um, and then also we want to have these regional exercises like targeting the hamstrings. We also want to target the calves. Well, a squat jump is going to target the calves. That's pretty good. Um, you could do a, a split squat where you have your front foot on a block and your heels hanging off so your calf is having to work there to stabilize the ankle. You could do seated calf raises, standing calf raises. You could do iso holds like the Alex Natera work. That's all going to be good. And if you're targeting the hamstrings, the glutes, the calves, your core, and you know maybe target upper body with some pull-ups or push-ups or things like that, then you're going to have a pretty good program that's going to help you with your force deficits. I think incorporating the heavy sled work is going to be really important so that way the strength you produce in those really general exercises can start to be transitioned into something a little bit more specific and then over time you could go to lighter sled work that is going to be you know even more relevant to sprinting and then over time maybe that gets out of the program and you're focusing just on sprinting by that point you would want to test your force velocity profile again hopefully you've tested it even prior to this point and then see what happens see if it improved. If it didn't, go back to the drawing boards, reassess. If it did improve, and now you have a velocity deficit, now you're going to have to shift into focusing more on faster sprints, faster lifts, and things like that. Speaking of a velocity deficit, if you have a velocity deficit, that's where you're going to want to stay away from the heavy squats, the really slow lifts, and focus more of your training on 10 meter flies, 20 meter flies, um, longer sprints where you're able to hit maximal velocity at some point in that sprint. Whatever distance it requires that for you to accelerate to be able to hit top speed, you want to be having that in your program as an emphasis if you have a velocity deficit. You can also do things like light Olympic lifts, jump squats at lighter loads. You could do band assisted jumps where you're pulling on a band that helps you jump up higher at a faster speed than you could jump normally. Um, those overspeed type jump uh, Exercises are going to be fairly useful if you have a velocity deficit. But like I said, the number one thing you could do is get out, do some flying 10s, flying 20s, and uh, you know see how that affects your force velocity profile. I would suggest that you check your force velocity profile fairly regularly, maybe every week or two weeks or three weeks, but you probably don't want to go more than a month without it because your training may have an effect relatively quickly. So for me, for example, I'm in a force deficit right now. I need to get stronger. Well, what if I do strength training for three weeks and then all of a sudden I'm back to a, a neutral number with my force velocity profile, but I don't check it, I don't test it, and then I keep doing strength and then eventually now I'm at a velocity deficit and now I've lost some high velocity qualities and I have to go earn those back. You know, you don't want to get into a position where the work that you do is impeding your improvement obviously by regularly keeping tabs on what your force velocity profile is whether on the track with the my sprint app or on the gym with the my jump app those are you know those assessments are going to be really useful for you so that way every few weeks you can be making sure that your training is still taking you in the direction you need to go instead of okay I have a force deficit now I'm gonna get strong but you do strength training so much that you now get slower or Oh, I have a velocity deficit, so I'm going to do, you know, flying 10s every day. Well, now your lifts are going down and your acceleration times are worse and, you know, you're seeing problems there. So that's why regular assessments are going to be very useful to you. 
and having a simple way to do that with an app like this it's you know there's no excuse to not check where you're at every once in a while and to keep yourself on track to where you're trying to go with your training so guys i hope you got something out of this video i hope you know you have some idea now of why we should be doing force velocity profiling how you can do it and um, some ideas as far as you know once you have your force velocity profile how you can train to improve based off of that as well as why you should be assessing yourself relatively regularly so that way you can make sure you're always going in the direction that you want to go and your training is going to be relevant to what your goals are at all times thank you guys for watching this video i really appreciate it while you're here check the links below i got workouts at sprintingworkouts.com i'm going to be you know working on some new programs here soon uh, also leave a comment if you have any questions or whatever people like to talk in the comment section so whatever you want to say leave it there um, and other than that guys i think that's it for today's video so i really appreciate you tuning in i'll catch you next time my name is cody bidlow with sprintingworkouts.com signing off